and I'm here with Chris Peters at UC Davis. Hi Chris, how are you doing today? Pretty good. I am the uh, president and CEO of the Seventh Generation Fund for Indigenous Peoples. We are a 36-year-old organization. We do grassroots uh, organizing and we fund projects throughout Native America, some in Central and South America, but pretty much in the United States. And we look for optimism in Native communities, we look for communities that are uh, inspiring, have a commitment to the continuation of Native traditions and uh, Native cultures. And what inspired the Seventh Generation Fund? What inspired the title, the concept? The Seventh Generation Fund started primarily in the 70s, but sort of grew out of a national movement at the time, a Native movement. So the concept uh, around Seventh Generation Fund uh, grew from that basic concept of uh, Six Nation peoples. Each of our deliberation, we consider the impact on seven generations to come. Working toward a goal that all of our descendants will have clean air and clean water, enough food to eat, and uh, have strong and vibrant communities, healthy communities that continue traditions and ceremonies, uh, much like our ancestors of the past. Next, I want to get into your activist projects with the human rights movement. How does that affect Native American communities? Native peoples historically have always been in the forefront of human rights issues. Ever since the colonization of the Americas began some 500 years ago, we were always in a resistance mode. In fact, uh, Native peoples have fought a continuing battle. We have to take necessary stands to defend our communities, uh, to defend our homelands, uh, to protect our families, and our basic rights for sustenance here in, in the Americas. And that battle has been ongoing and will continue to be ongoing. The, the newcomers, the Euro-Americas, have continuously attacked our communities. Recently, I think that movement has intensified because, you know, the available uh, resources, strategic resources uh, in America and perhaps the world, if we look at indigenous peoples throughout the world, happen to be on or near indigenous lands. And the recent efforts to exploit those resources has intensified and will continue to intensify because resources throughout the world have been used up. Indigenous peoples throughout America are still relatively rich with resources. And I think that's the battle we look for fighting continuously in the future. Gold mining, uranium mining, coal mining are certainly at the forefront of each of our battles now. But I think as we turn and look at a future that will be impacted with uh, significant climate change, uh, water becomes a critical resource. And indigenous peoples in the Americas, we have sort of a retained rights to water. We need to assert that right because water is going to be the next war. It's already the next war uh, and it will intensify. Any uh, tribal communities that have running rivers and streams, those are certainly going to be targeted. Water is the basis of life. And uh, as those are drained, our communities are gonna be impacted. You know, the consumption level is at an extent where it is unsustainable. If we are concerned about generations to come, there, there has to be some um, uh, consideration of how we live and how we consume today. We are consuming energy at a, a rate where our grandkids and great-grandkids will have no heat in their homes. And that's significant. They will have no food to put on their tables. We are we are eating the food of our grandkids. That should be a call to people to say, hey, we have to stop, we have to slow down a little bit and, and provide for that longer term vision of how the earth will survive. There are still significant numbers of traditional people that still hold hard to those concepts and those belief systems. I think they offer a solution and a direction for not only indigenous peoples, but uh, perhaps all peoples of the world that we need to be looking at a more earth conscious way of understanding a ecological mindset. You know, the newcomers, the non-native people uh, have been exploiting and exploiting the world at a rate where it is unsustainable. 
Native peoples now are beginning to get involved in that exploitation too. And we need to, we're at a good time where we can step back and say, hey, is this the direction we want to go? Or is there a different direction that we need as human beings need to take? And, and I think that fork in the road is an important um, uh, time to consider who we are and where we want to go. And Native peoples need to be outspoken. They need to be invited to the table to talk about these issues more. And they need to be demanding positions at the table to address these issues. The Seventh Generation Fund is looking into the future. What do you guys look for through your lens? The future has to be developed by the people, by Native peoples. And uh, we've done a, a few futuring uh, conversations with grassroots communities. And generally what we find is that uh, they're looking for a return to a time when life was more simple, mm -hmm. life was a little easier, where there were communities and families that were, were together, stronger, where community gardens were uh, not an anomaly, but were a major factor in all of the communities where there was orchards. Food sovereignty was not an issue because we grew and we produced food and, and we lived happy lives again. There were ceremonies again. There was uh, more involvement around uh, uh, who we were as, as native or indigenous peoples. But perhaps every tribal nation need to take the time to sit down and say, let's look at our future. Let's spend some time for the next two weeks and just think about how we want to, as, as people, how we want to develop, how we want to grow, in which directions, what are the goals that we want to achieve, and begin to construct plans and strategies to get mm -hmm. there. Thank you for speaking with us today. I'm Bronwyn and you're on Native Ground.